Hello and welcome to another milestone moment here in the Lendy living room. Yes, Lendy is your home for home loans. For further information, jump on to lendy.com.au. Today, we are joined by one of the West Coast Eagles' most consistent performers week in, week out, Mark Hutchings, before his 100th game. Hutchings keeps going around his body. How big would this be? Oh, yes! Hutchy, welcome, mate, to the Lendy living room. You couldn't provide your own living room this time around? No, uh, I felt the, these are probably better quality couches too. Was the invite given to host in your living room? It was, but it's a tight week and I just thought it's easier. Let's go back to the start of your career. Uh, you're obviously in line to play your 100th game this weekend, but it started at St Kilda. How was your time at St Kilda? Um, tell, us about, tell us about your time there. Yeah, I was a rookie at St Kilda back in 2010. Look, ah. Oh, Enjoyed my time there. It was a great learning experience for me. It was my first time being drafted. I was 18. Uh, moved out of home to live in Melbourne and uh, yeah, grateful for the experience, but it didn't work out. I got delisted at the end of that season uh, by Ross Lyon, who was a coach of the Saints back then. And I came back to, came back to Perth and um, worked hard in the waffle because it was my dream to at least play an AFL game and get drafted again. So thankfully Eagles gave me the second chance and here we are today. So, delisted by St Kilda, did you think, did you ever have the thoughts that the AFL dream might be over? Yeah, probably, oh, it definitely crosses your mind. It's hard to get a second chance um, at an AFL list, uh, but I thought I was better than what I showed um, in that year in 2010, so I wanted to prove that to myself, mainly. Uh, but yeah, I always had that ambition. Um, I knew that probably might not happen again, but I didn't want to leave any stone unturned. So you were able to go in and have a couple of good years in the waffle, uh, premiership player in your final year, best on in the grand final? Yep, so that was actually my uh, first year at West Coast. I was um, at West Perth and we won the flag that year. It was before the alignment had happened. But oh, that's good. I'm glad I've uh, absolutely missed that. that when, right. uh, yeah, I'll probably introduced myself to you probably three years in by the sounds of things. Yeah, yourself and Mitch Brown were uh, yeah, best buddies and probably didn't talk to anyone who wasn't a defender. Right. Uh, back then, so... It's good to chat to you today then, mate. Yeah, nice to meet you, mate. Yep. Really good to see you. <laughs> Congrats on the 100 games. Thanks, <laughs> mate. Throughout your career, you... I hope you're happy to sort of embrace the fact that you've been on the fringes at stages. You've been in and out of the team. How's that been from a personal level? How, how have you fought through times coming in and out of the team? Yeah, yeah, it's happened uh, all throughout my career. Um, oh, it's definitely tough. Uh, Every player wants consistency and it's when you get good consistency, I think my performance improves and a lot of players' performance gets better, but um, often you need to prove yourself through performance to earn that consistency. So it's a chicken or the egg type scenario, but um, oh, AFL is a tough gig, it's a tough industry and you just got to, you're going to have setbacks along the way and uh, whether it's selection or injury, um, you got to keep knocking down the door and not taking no for an answer. So um, early in my, on in my career, I was a bit of a um, in and out, um, but I've liked to think I've improved as a footballer since then. And um, last few years has been good, been a lot more consistent. So talking about consistency, I think you're one of our most consistent performers and whether that's been if you've had to go back to the waffle or not, how, how do you do that? How do you, how, do you, how do you become a consistent AFL player? Oh, for me, it's about being organised and having a good routine. Um, I like to do things my way, um, I know what works for me and I sort of yeah, have that, that routine that keeps me organised and keeps my head in the game. So uh, as long as I can do those things throughout the week that sort of builds up my confidence and um, my preparation, um, that gives me a good platform to perform on the weekend and helps me stay consistent. Now I can ask this because I've been in similar situations to yourself Mark, uh, in and out of the team, how has that affected relationships with coaches? Uh, is it challenging at times? How do you manage those relationships? Because in the end, the coach is your boss. Coach is your boss, and uh, he's got a. You sort of you do see it from his side. He's got 45 players, and he can only pick 22 on game day. But every player seems to, or thinks they should be in the 22. So um, you and I know better than most uh, that we believe we're in the best 22, um, and sometimes we're not chosen to run out on game day, which is hard. But you've got, just got to suck it up, um, play a little bit angry when you're um, in the waffle and prove, prove, you've got to prove to them that uh, 
you're in the best team. So, yeah, it's hard. You've got to have those honest conversations with the coaches. Um, they're not easy conversations, but we're all men um, at a footy club. And um, that communication, that honest communication, uh, is something that is good to get off your chest, but it's always also good to hear from the coaches. Um, because, yeah, there's no point dancing around the fact a lot of the time. You just want to hear it straight. So I've copped that um, a lot over the, season, uh, over the years. And I've um, got th some things off my chest as well, as I'm sure you have. Love it, mate. Uh, always fun to have those honest conversations in the coach's office. Yep. I feel like you're one of the most criminally underrated players in the competition, let alone our team. Um, you, you've developed yourself into a, there's no better way to put it, you're a tagger. You're a tagger and yep. you're a bloody good one. You've held some great scalps, especially probably over the last 24 months. What's the, what's the, what's the feedback from the public like uh, being a tagger on the field, off the field? Do, do you think it's well received? Do you think you... I, I would say mixed. Eagles supporters tend to are positive. I think they appreciate what I do. Uh, anyone who's not an Eagles supporter, generally negative. I've copped some both in person and via social media, um, some fairly honest uh, feedback. Appraisals, are you appraisals of my performance, which is fine. That's their that's their prerogative. But um, yeah, I mean, it's not a glamorous job. It's not a uh, it's not a sexy job. But uh, it's something that the team values, the club values, and I think our supporters um, appreciate. And that's all that really matters. Um, that my teammates and coaches and the club. Um, values what I do and holds me accountable. Um, that's all that matters. But yeah, you do get some feedback, uh, especially from opposition supporters and, and players out there, but you just got to um, cop it and move on. Do you, how do you go about being the, some of the best players in the competition? Are you, are you a vocal player? Are you uh, a bit of banter on the field? Uh, what's your preparation like when you're coming up some of the best in the comp? Yeah, I'm very, I uh, don't say a word out there. I'm either too too tired to say anything or can't be bothered or I don't really have that good banter to say to them. So good. I'm not going to embarrass myself, I'm not going to enter that domain. Uh, some players are good at it but I'm not one of them so I just stay away from that. A couple of highlights from the career mate. Um, look, beating, beating the best in the comp and keeping them quiet, well up there but a couple of real highlights. Uh, RAC Derby where you high-fived a crowd member after a ripping goal from the boundary. You remember that one? Yeah, I was very happy with that one. I think it was the second goal of the game. Uh, just got caught up in the moment, I think. Yeah. So, yeah. Drawing on your inner James Hurd when he jumped into the crowd. Yeah, I didn't quite get that far. If I kicked a couple more, that would have been on the cards. But yeah, first, second goal of the game, not quite. Um, I believe you've, ni you've nicknamed yourself Mark Clutchings after selling some candy and putting through the sealer against Brisbane uh, a couple of years ago. Yeah, that was a clutch goal. Fact or fiction, Mark Clutchings? Fact, but I didn't give it myself that. Gov did. So, well, I'm happy to claim it. I like it. Uh, to be honest, I think we should probably just call you that. I think we scrap Hutchings from the rest of the uh, records. Uh, now, and this has got to be, I'm, I'm hoping, a career highlight, uh, 2018 Premiership. Before we get to that, how are we able to draw on your experiences in the 2015 Grand Final? Um, and how did that help you in 2018? Yeah, I think uh, with 2018, we're a lot more experienced. I was, certainly was uh, as an AFL footballer, but also playing on such a big stage and at the MCG. Um, 2015, it was the first AFL Grand Final that I played. It was a great occasion, but probably that week beforehand was even bigger. And I think I probably learnt in 2018 to just um, accept the week a bit better, um, not live it as much as um, the fans did, as much as the uh, as club did. So just uh, cruise through the week a little bit more, and then I was fresh and um, sharp for the game, and which is the most uh, important two hours of, of my life. Um, that 2018 grand final, so uh, that was probably, yeah, just, you're just more experienced and you know when to switch off and when to switch on. You must be incredibly proud to, one, play your role. Uh, you had still side bottom on the day. Um, you kept him to not a lot of touches and named in the best players, biggest stage of your career. If you had asked me at the start of the day, keep your seal to 14 touches, would have taken it in a heartbeat. So um, to do my bit, everyone, Everyone did their bit. I mean, you, yourself in, in the back line, the forwards kicking the goals and the mids doing their thing. Uh, everyone chipped in and that's why we got a good result. But for me to do my bit, uh, I was pleased and um, proud of myself to do that. Getting that medal up on the dais must have been pretty special. Yeah, uh, I just tried to walk a little bit slower to take it all in because it's, what, 10, 12 seconds um, for a lifetime's work. So I wanted to make sure I enjoyed it, um, shake the kid's hand and uh, 
feel that metal around my neck. One question. Now, you obviously leave me out of this list because, uh, well, most have named me in it. Um, three, three best teammates of all time. Now, yeah, you can take that how you like. Performance, yeah. Yeah, friendship, yeah, yeah. role playing ability. Three best teammates. Yep, through your time at the Eagles. And you know what? You can add St Kilda if you like. The thing with 34 in the locker room is, is it's like a revolving door either side of you. The higher numbers generally have a higher turnover of players. The last six or seven seasons I've been the... I mean, Fraser McInnes, he's up there as a good, reliable teammate. He's number 36, I'm number 34. Mm. We're locker buddies, we're around the same area. I've been here since the same, same time, so I would have him as um, top three teammates. That's interesting, because... Um I think 31's only actually two, th maybe three lockers down from 34. Well, the first two or three seasons, you didn't talk to anyone who wasn't a defender, I remember. So, it's perfect. Yeah. Uh, so, so not a good team, mate. Eh? Fraser McInnes, tick. I would put Dean Cox up there yep. in terms of talent and um, charisma. Don't yeah. tell him that. He was, he was charismatic. The boys liked him. Yeah, the boys liked him. The boys liked him. We're not talking about to females. Yeah, oh, no, 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 no. No, couldn't hit a barn door, but... Uh, <laughs> For, for the boys, the boys loved him. So Dean Cox is up there. Yep. And you've got to love your Ruckman. Yep. So he's up there. And I guess um, oh, you can't leave out Pritter. Like he's, in terms of setting an example as a footballer, he'd be um, top three teammates easily. So, um, and similar sort of journey, him mature age um, draftee. And when I got drafted, I was a little bit older than the 18 year olds that were getting drafted. So yeah, they were, they'd be on my top Did three. you just miss out on a Sandover? Were you high in the rankings? Yeah, I, runner up. One oh, season, so. Huge. Is that cut a bit deep? Or? Yeah, it's always, yeah, it'd be nice to win one. Who won it that year? Kane Mitchell won it that year. Now, I thought I'd finish on this one. Um, I have been finishing with some of the other boys on how they'd like to be remembered by their players. And to be honest, I think that's a pretty simple one for you. I think you're a role player. Yeah, for me, uh, just be reliable. Mm -hmm. That's um, something that I want to pride myself on and be remembered for, to be a reliable um, teammate who um, wants the best for the team. I think you've done that in spades, mate, in your 100 games. Um, we do a thing in the pre-season where we, we, we get the players to pick the teams. Yeah. So on reflection of wanting your teammates to remember you as a reliable player, I believe 2019, this year, may be the first year you've ever been named in, there's six teams that named with all six different groups, first year that you've ever been named in all six teams. Yeah, and even last year, I maybe got jagged one team. So, yeah, I mean, yourself and I love this exercise early in the preseason uh, because... Does that mo motivate you when you get left out of teams by players? By your fellow teammates, it yeah. does. Yeah, it puts a chip on your shoulder. Uh, and that's what's driven me. Um, whether it's 1% or 10%, it just... You don't take it um, nicely. You just play with that fire in your belly. Um, so yeah, that has happened. It's yeah, it's been funny. This preseason is the first time I've been in all the teams, which is um, acknowledgement from the boys, which is nice. But yeah, certainly in the past, it's been a chip on my shoulder, um, and you just use that little bit of extra motivation. Not not that I need any, but I think that you've been named in every team. Um, coming up for your hundredth game, reflective of how the boys are viewing you at the moment. Variable, reliable team player, and uh, just want to say congratulations on hundred, mate. Thanks, Thanks for joining mate. us. Thanks, Will. Good job.